Hey guys, it's Pineapple, and I'm sorry that it's been a while since we've seen each other, but I honestly wasn't really feeling the best, and then my girlfriend got sick, and some things happened that kind of made me need to take a little bit of a break. But today we're feeling rested and really good, and we're going to be talking about My Hero Academia Season 6, Episode 8. And more or less just giving my thoughts and what I thought about the episode. We're not going to try to go step by step, because I feel like a lot of reviewers, we just go step by step through the episode. I'm guilty of that also. I just kind of want to give my feelings on it, right, and not keep you guys here too long. So for me, this last week is actually actually been very long. It feels like it's kind of drawn on. So it feels like it's been forever since I've seen an episode of MHA, even though I have been keeping up weekly. And I didn't really know what to expect from this episode overall, right? Like a lot of the other anime that I've been watching this anime season already, they've had a lot of like strong animated moments like where they've really, really popped off looking at Chainsaw Man and Mob and even Bleach. And I don't necessarily have any complaints about the season of My Hero Academia. Actually, I think it's the best season of My Hero Academia that we've gotten ever since maybe season four. I mean, I, I don't know. I just really didn't like season five. But in episode eight, we start off with the recap, right? Where we have, we hit a really somber note on just Midnight getting hit by that piece of rubble by Mr. Compress in the last episode and her having to give the plan over to Yao Yorozu and be like, hey, it's your time to shine, baby girl. I don't know. You know, I'm in trouble over here. So you need to figure out how to stop that guy. And I really, really like how that whole section of the episode was handled, right? Because in the manga, I remember feeling like, you know, this is cool, but I do really want to see like the Shigaraki and Deku and Endeavor battle going on over here. I didn't mind per se having the Makia versus student situation going on, but of course I like, you know, dealing with one situation at a time more so when I'm reading, like depending on, I guess, which series, right? When it comes to the battles. But here I really, really liked how just showing how Momo took command of all the students, right? And really, really showed that leadership that she's developed over the course of the series, coming from a character who early on had a lot of doubts about what they could do, right, and making plans and just not being able to kind of come up with anything and scrambling, that's who Momo used to be. And now by season six, Momo's become a person who can make a plan strong enough to even pose a threat to Gigantomachia, who we know is like, bar none, one of the most powerful, just menacing characters in the entire series. And I got to give it to the students. They really, really do put on a show here trying to take the giant down and I think it was handled very very well because some things are more clear in the anime once you have color right like I saw Mineta he has like those long yellow Mineta ropes I guess I guess that's just something he can do now uh, I know they've been forgetting to draw kind of the the grape stem that is on the grapes on his head or on on his costume sometimes so it's good to see that actually getting some use and being very very durable in uh, holding Makia down. During this part in the manga, I had a theory that I thought Mineta was actually gonna stop Makia to like avenge what Makia did to Mount Lady, right? Because we had that character arc where Mineta hated Mount Lady and ever since Mina brainwashed Mineta kind of in that background of that scene a while back now, I wanna say, it's been a long time. Mineta's actually been a lot more of a tolerable character, right? Like I did think that that's what was gonna happen, but I do like seeing that the Mineta grapes were actually really, really effective against Makia. And it just kind of more so proves that those grapes are ridiculous. Like Mineta is actually just secretly broken. But the linchpin of the plan, everything kind of rode on Momo having these cylinders that were filled with sedatives that they had to get inside of Makia's mouth. And everyone, they, they really, really tried hard to get it in there and the music was really swelling. But the part that obviously got me as a fanboy of My Hero Academia and as a fanboy of the soundtrack, a song that we haven't heard in a while actually appeared in a scene where Kirishima saves Mina, right? And actually takes some damage and starts running up Makia to feed him that one sedative. And we hear you say run for the first time. And I feel like it's definitely been a while and it was really, really nice to have here again. And honestly, I like when Kirishima is presented like forward as one of the more main side characters, right? Like he was in the season of Overhaul. So I do like the choice of using you say run for him. All in all, I just thought this scene was really really impressive and honestly if I was an anime only I could easily see how you would think Hiroshima might have been dead there when Gigantomachia like pressed him down they made that way more dramatic in the anime and I loved how that was handled also to speak about like Mina's scene with her flashback 
that was just great. Like that moment of realization, I was wondering how they were going to get that across. And I think they did that very, very well. Just showing that at the end of the day, these are still students in a war zone. You know what I mean? And as resolved as Mina and everyone else is, sometimes you can flash back to a terrible memory of the past to be reminded that you've interacted with these villains before maybe. And that might put fear in you and that's understandable when you're just like a high schooler trying to fight giant mountain sized villains. So I like that shot of humanity, right? Like not everyone here is perfect and you don't need to be as long as everyone works together because there's always going to be someone there to cover for you or at least that's the hope. So all in all, I was pretty hyped during this section with the students and Gigantomachia. Now we cut from that section back over to the Shigaraki and Deku and Endeavor area and I do feel like I really, really like the voice acting from Shigaraki Shigaraki here giving his speech and finally showing what his convictions are because I do think a lot of Shigaraki's character development happened away from the heroes, right? It happened away from characters like Endeavor, so they're not really informed on just how Shigaraki is developed and how Shigaraki has remembered who he is at his very core and how that drives his hatred moving forward. So I liked Endeavor kind of talking trash to Shigaraki like, hey dude, you're never gonna win because your destruction has no conviction. There's nothing behind it. And Shigaraki stepping up behind that and saying, hey, I actually do have a reason. Here is my reason. You heroes suck. You all just abandon your families to try to save these random people. And I don't care if you understand it or not, because that's what makes us heroes and villains. And that scene was just so raw in the manga, and I really, really liked how it was handled in the anime. I do think at the very, very end of Shigaraki would have yelled a little more. That would have been cooler. But I just like how Shigaraki is being depicted in the season. I think a lot of his scenes look really great. The, the art direction in a lot of his scenes looks really awesome. And even in sections of the episode where maybe things are a little slower or the art is a little wonkier for some characters, it seems like Shigaraki always does get that focus to make sure that the main villain is looking pristine. Now, of course, the episode more or less ends on the scramble between Shigaraki and Aizawa and everyone. Shigaraki ultimately trying to get Aizawa to shut his quirk off any way that he can and using a delete around on Aizawa. And we're going to see where that cliffhanger goes next week. And we see Deku starting the beatdown that's also going to lead into next week with Deku finally going 100% against Shigaraki, right? And Shigaraki actually being capable of taking that. Now, in the manga, I remember that when Deku does his 100% Wyoming smash, I do believe that Shigaraki catches it in his mouth, but like you see that Deku's arm is like tearing Shigaraki's teeth out and there's a lot of like blood and like Shigaraki's jaw is just being obviously dislocated and almost torn off by trying to hold on to Deku's arm, but he does hold on to Deku's arm. And obviously they didn't want to go that violent for the anime, they didn't want to show that much, but maybe that's something, I, I don't even want to say maybe we'll get it in the Blu-ray, I just think that's that's a decision that they made and I'm not necessarily too mad about it, honestly. You know, I, I, we're six seasons in, you know, you come to expect certain things of the series, so I didn't think they were gonna have his jaw necessarily hanging completely off. Let's just see how they handle some of the other stuff that's gonna be happening because in this series, Shigaraki does go through it quite a bit now that he has this regeneration ability. So I don't know how they're going to handle some future scenes that are probably going to happen with Shigaraki losing a lot of skin and losing a lot of, uh, he's just going to go through a lot. So I wonder how they're going to animate that if they're not going to show things like, you know, his jaw being broken. That's, that's the least of the things you have to worry about censoring moving forward with Shigaraki, honestly. Now I like where the episode ends as a cliffhanger. I like it ending on Aizawa getting hit with the delete around and you kind of having an idea if you look at the scene very closely of what might happen there, by next episode, so it's not a complete, like, pillow to the cliffhanger, I suppose, when next week comes. But for anime onlys, I very much hope they're enjoying this part of the season. Everything has kind of been smooth sailing so far. I do believe we're more than halfway at this point towards the end of the war arc. And that, for me, means at least we're going to start getting into some interesting content as far as, you know, just revolving around Deku and stuff like that. And depending on what episode the war arc actually ends on, that'll really inform more or less if we're going to get that final Shigaraki battle at the very end of the season, or if that's something that's going to be saved for next season. For those manga readers, they know exactly what I'm talking about. But all in all, I really, really liked the episode this week. I think everything was on point. The music, the animation wasn't like crazy or anything like that, but it, it did its job as I can say for every episode we've had thus far. A lot of people think that I'm very like, that I have extremely high expectations and that if they're not met, I'm just gonna be very upset. But I don't think that's the case, honestly. I think they just have to show that they're putting in like a, a really good effort, a really solid effort and make this season look better than previous seasons, right? And I think so far, so good, honestly. I 
do think the camera work was a little better in season five, like in the joint training arc. I do think they did some more creative things with the camera or at least had the CG team help out with some backgrounds and stuff a little more. But that's not something that I'm going to take away from this season because, again, this season has kept me very happy. Now, next week is going to be a very, very important episode. Uh, it's the Bakugo Katsuki Rising episode. This is a major, major episode for a lot of people in the fandom that they're very excited for. It's going to be surrounding around Bakugo and Deku's situation of Shigaraki and everything. I don't really want to go too deeply into it for any anime onlys that are still watching this video. But next week, again, is an episode that a lot of people I know are looking forward to. Uh, from the preview, though, it doesn't look like the, you know, the best episode as far as animation goes, right? Some of the moments in the episode that we're getting next week, I'm sure a lot of people were picturing like Nakamura or this and that. And I, I think it's going to be one of those episodes where expectations might kind of end up biting us in the butt, right? Like we are expecting Deku to go crazy on Shigaraki and for that to look amazing and all this stuff, but we might not actually be getting such a showcase of animation, right? Maybe, I, I, I don't know. It doesn't look like that from the previews, but sometimes the previews had kind of led us wrong. So we'll see where it goes next week. And I definitely will be here with another upload. Sorry about the little leave of absence again. My goal is to start uploading daily every day again. So hopefully I'll see you guys in a little bit. It's Pineapple. Love you guys. Thank you for staying true to the channel and staying loyal and everything. And I appreciate it. I'll see you again later. Peace. <laughs>